45 crazy music facts everyone should know. At a The Who concert in 1969, a man rushed the stage and tried to take the microphone. Roger Daltrey punched him in the face and Pete Townsend kicked him in the crotch. The man was actually a plainclothes policeman trying to warn of a large fire next door. Townsend was later arrested. In 1957, Elvis Presley asked his audience at a Seattle concert to please rise for the national anthem. He picked up his guitar, leaned in, shook his hips, and began his biggest hit. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. The crowd went wild. A 15-year-old Jimi Hendrix was there. A guy named Seth Putnam wrote a song about how being in a coma was stupid and soon after went into a coma himself. After he awoke, when asked how it felt to be in a coma, he said, It was just as f stupid as I wrote about in my song. Jermaine Fuller, the singer of Peanut Butter Jelly Time, died in an 11-hour police standoff, during which time his brother-in-law, Snoop Dogg, attempted to calm him down and surrender. Aerosmith's Joe Perry sold his 1959 Gibson Les Paul during his divorce in 1982. Later, he found the guitar was owned by Slash. Perry bugged him for years, offering to pay more than the guitar's worth. Years later, at Joe's 50th birthday party, Slash finally gave him the guitar as a gift. DJ Grand Wizard Theodore accidentally invented the scratch. While trying to hold a spinning record in place in order to listen to his mom, who was yelling at him, Grand Wizard accidentally caused the record to produce the sound that is now known as the scratch. Paul McCartney was mugged at Knife Point in Nigeria. The thieves made off with all the demo tapes for the album Band on the Run that he was down there to make. McCartney had to recreate the demos entirely from memory before the album could be remade. Bono was campaigning to have first world taxpayers forgive all third world debt whilst hiding U2's earnings from Irish tax collectors in the Netherlands. On August 13, 1966, in response to John Lennon's more popular than Jesus comment, a radio station in Texas held a burning of Beatles merchandise. The next day, the broadcast tower was struck by lightning, damaging much of their equipment and sending the news director to the hospital. Simon and Garfunkel's first album was so unsuccessful that the duo split. Their producer took one of the songs from the album, remixed it without their knowledge or permission, and the sounds of silence became a hit. In music, an eighth note is called a quaver, a sixteenth note is called a semi-quaver, a 32nd note is called a demi-semi-quaver, a 64th note is called a hemi-demi-semi-quaver, a 128th note is called a semi-hemi-demi-semi-quaver, and a 256th note is called a demi-semi-hemi-demi-semi-quaver. Dave Grohl was the only band member of Foo Fighters when recording the first album. He wrote and recorded all vocal, guitar, bass, and drum tracks himself. When the band Judas Priest appeared on The Simpsons, they were mistakenly defined as death metal. The producers decided to apologize for the mistake by having Bart Simpson write, Judas Priest is not death metal, in the opening sequence chalkboard gag. American singer Trent Reznor felt his song, A Warm Place, was too good to be his own work. After the song had been released, he was horrified to discover that he had indeed copied the melody from a piece by David Bowie called Crystal Japan, written for a Japanese gin advert. Bowie found this hilarious. In 2004, Steven Seagal released a dancehall song called Strut, in which he sings in a fake Jamaican accent, and his first line in the song is, Mi Wanda Punani. Keith Moon hated drum solos and refused to play them in concerts. In one show, Townsend and Entwistle decided to spontaneously stop playing to hear Moon's drum solo. Moon stopped too, shouting, Drum solos are boring! In 1957, a 13-year-old Jimmy Page played on a BBC talent show. When asked what he wanted to do after schooling, Page said he wanted to do biological research and find a cure for cancer. Israeli songwriter Naomi Shemer always denied she had taken the melody for Jerusalem of Gold from Pelo Jocsepe, stricken with cancer which she felt might have been caused by her deception. She confessed in her deathbed that she had, in fact, heard Pelo Jocsepe prior to writing Jerusalem of Gold. During a 2014 concert, Concert, American rapper Kanye West halted the performance of Good Life, saying, I can't do this show until everybody stands up, pointing at the only person in the audience who wasn't standing up and dancing. That person was in a wheelchair. The disco hit and gay anthem It's Raining Men was co-written by Paul Schaffer and was originally offered to Diana Ross, Donna Summer, Cher, and Barbara Streisand before being accepted by the Weather Girls. Deep Purple was recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the globe's loudest band. When in a concert at the London 
London Rainbow Theatre, their sound reached 117 decibels. Three of their audience members were rendered unconscious. As a child, John Mayer became so obsessed with his guitar that his parents took him to a psychiatrist twice. A British newspaper, The Sun, published a story alleging Elton John had the voice boxes of his own guard dogs removed. They were proven wrong when a reporter went round to check and the dogs barked at him. Bob Marley's wife, Rita, was shot in the head during his attempted assassination. However, she had dreadlocks so thick they saved her life. In 2017, the British band Muse invited ticket holders for an upcoming gig in London to vote online for 10 songs that they wanted to be added to the set list. Fans immediately flooded the poll with votes for 15-year-old B-sides and tracks that the band had never played live before. When Billie Holiday would perform Strange Fruit at gigs, the club owner would order the waiters to stop serving, and the room would be in complete darkness except for a single spotlight on her face. It would close her act, and there would be no encore. In the 1980s, Janet Jackson was criticized for not writing her own music and being too dependent on producers. In response, she wrote and co-produced every song on her following album, which ended up being her best-selling album ever. The French duo Daft Punk got their name from a negative review they received from Melody Maker magazine for a trio they were in before. A journalist wrote that their music was a daft punky thrash. They found it funny, creating one of the most influential music acts of the 90s and 2000s. Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash did not allow the TV show Glee to use any of Guns N' Roses music, despite many attempts from producers. He stated, Glee is worse than Grease, and Grease is bad enough. In 1985, John Fogarty was sued by Fantasy Records for copyright infringement because his 1980 hit song, The Old Man Down the Road, sounded too much like CCR's 1970s hit, Run Through the Jungle, a song that Fogarty wrote and produced. The case cost him $1.1 million in legal fees. He pushed it to the Supreme Court to fight the double standard of defendants not being awarded the fees and won, setting a precedent that defends artists from corporate sabotage. In 1967, Paul McCartney forgot his passport when traveling to France to shoot a music video. He told the passport agents, You know who I am, so why do you need to see a photograph of me in a passport? And they let him through. The Australian band, Tame Impala, is a single person named Kevin Parker, who writes, plays, and produces all the recorded music, but tours with a group of other musicians to form the full live band. Jack Black desperately wanted to use Led Zeppelin's immigrant song in School of Rock, but the band was notoriously reluctant to let their music be used in films. The director suggested having Black record a personal plea to the band members in front of a crowd of 1,000 extras. It worked. Bob Marley wrote Zimbabwe in support of the Marxist, Leninist, and Maoist guerrillas fighting against the Rhodesian government. After Robert Mugabe became the leader of the new country of Zimbabwe, Marley was invited to perform at the country's independence celebrations. The Victor Wind Museum of Curiosities in London has a poop from Amy Winehouse on display. They charge five pounds for a sniff. In 1994, a man named Tony Sicoria was struck by lightning while standing next to a public telephone and resuscitated by a nurse who was waiting to use the phone. Not long after recovery, he said his head became flooded with music. He bought a piano and is now a successful composer and performer. Elvis Presley's manager sold I Hate Elvis badges as a way to make money from people who weren't buying Elvis merchandise. Ozzy Osbourne's entire genome was once analyzed by scientists to determine how his body survived decades of drug abuse. Geneticists found several gene variants that they'd never seen before, including variants that could have helped his body absorb methamphetamines and other recreational drugs. Julian Lennon had to buy the letters he wrote to his father, John Lennon, at an auction because Yoko Ono wouldn't give them to him. David Bowie used to travel around in New York carrying a Greek newspaper in the belief that people would assume he was just a Greek man who looked like David Bowie and leave him alone. Led Zeppelin became so frustrated with reporters and interviewers that officials had to put down strict rules for anyone who went backstage. One of those rules stated, do not make any sort of eye contact with John Bonham. This is for your own safety. 